Hey guys, I've always liked electric vehicles and have built uh, several of them in the past, including a few uh, electric bicycles. I thought I'd do a video on this uh, electric bike I built, as well as a little bit of the history of different uh, bikes I built in the past. This thing is just stupid fun. The acceleration is ridiculous. I started uh, with a bike just with one of these uh, friction uh, drive things. This is from an old bike in the early 2000s called the EV Warrior. And then later I built uh, this monstrosity that you're seeing right now. It uses essentially the same parts as this bike. And then, uh, then I built this one in around uh, 2005. This bike is based on a Stingray Kids Chopper frame. I chose this because it's uh, pretty strong for uh, how big it is which is important because this uh, bike is quite powerful. Uh, basic specs are uh, uh, lithium ion batteries is based on six um, RC lithium polymers, uh, five amp hour, 22.2 um, volt. So in total, this battery is 44.4 volts at 15 amp hours. Uh, this used to have four uh, 12 volt, 17 uh, amp hour lead acid batteries like uh, out of UPSs, but those were way too heavy. And a couple of years ago, I swapped it for this uh, new battery. This is a picture of what it looked like with the old ones. I think the whole bike weighs, in the current configuration, about 45 kilos, about 100 pounds. With the old batteries, it was much heavier, about um, 150 pounds or uh, like 60 kilos or so. The main goal for this project was to be uh, a bike that's just ridiculously fun. It didn't have to be uh, really practical. And to be ridiculously fun, it has to be ridiculously powerful. So. It's got a Briggs & Stratton E-Tech electric motor. This is a motor normally used for powering golf carts, but it's really light. It's only about uh, 10 kilograms. This is, gives it insane power. Uh, this is connected to a uh, motor controller. This is one of the first motor controllers I built. Incredibly, it is still uh, holding up. There's uh, FETs in here, main bypass caps, some uh, power supplies and some control boards with an old uh, Pick 16F 877, I think, drove this, and yeah, I'm surprised this is holding up so well. This is I built this in 2004, I think, it was one of my very earliest real projects. This uh, can run up to 72 volts, up to 550 amps. Although on this, I have it limited to 300 amps because any more current, and you will literally flip over backwards from the acceleration. That's what limits the uh, the acceleration on this bike. This controller can also do regenerative braking, where it basically uses the motor as the inductor in a boost converter to recharge the batteries. This can put 150 amps of current uh, into the batteries during regen. So as long as the batteries are discharged enough, you can do basically all your braking through regen. It really saves the brake pads. So far, I haven't found any need to put the controller on a heatsink. It just doesn't get warm enough. Even under very heavy up and uh, riding up and down hills, it only gets slightly warm. One of the reasons this motor is so light and produces so much power is that it has a disc-shaped armature with the uh, magnet flux going axially rather than the normal uh, radial configuration. Here's a cutaway view of what that, how it's actually built inside. Briggs & Stratton made these motors initially for golf carts and also for things like floor machines where they would, uh, I believe they would directly drive the polishing wheels as they spun. But it was sort of a commercial failure for them and they discontinued it within a few years of, uh, of introduction. But it was, this motor was responsible for some of the most insane uh, combat robots and uh, battle bots and things like that because you can get such a powerful motor and so such a light, uh, such a light package, you could have really powerful spinning weapons. And of course you can have really insane bikes like this. Here's the back of the brush holder showing the connections to the eight brushes. Yes, this motor has eight brushes arranged axially like this and they seem to still have lots of life left. That's good. There you can see the back of the commutator. These really are cool motors. They were invented by a guy, I think, called Cedric Lynch, who made the uh, Lynch Electric Motor Company, or Lemco, and then Briggs & Stratton licensed that from them back in the day. They still make motors like this, uh, a company called Mars Electric, or uh, they might have a new name now, uh, make, uh, continued on uh, the legacy of these type of motors, so you, you can still buy them. 
Another interesting thing of note on this motor is the uh, only thing holding the case closed is this one bolt. And that's really just to stop the back end from spinning relative to the rest. Because there's axial flux running through, there's a huge clamping force due to the magnets keeping the motor closed, so that's the only thing needed to hold the back cover on. You need a special press or a rig to pull the back magnet off if you want to disassemble the motor. And then another one to push the shaft out uh, to, to, uh, against the uh, other magnets on the other side. The drivetrain is really simple. It's just uh, I think a 17 tooth sprocket to uh, like 104, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, 104 tooth sprocket on the rear. I really didn't want to deal with a jack shaft and having two stages of reduction. Uh, this motor goes at 3,400 RPM, which is actually relatively slow for a motor like this. And this gets enough reduction. I believe the top speed is about 45 kilometers an hour uh, with the current reduction. Yeah, it's geared for uh, for acceleration rather than uh, rather than speed. Uh, the sprocket is just attached to the stock rear hub, with it just has a seven, 18 screws driven, uh, t drilled and tapped in there. And that seems to hold handle the torque just fine. And there's just a plate that adapts it to this uh, inner diameter of this sprocket. I think this sprocket was designed for uh, junior dragsters. It was pretty hard to find this, and it's not a common item. This whole thing was built back when I didn't really have many tools other than basic drills and saws, so everything on this is doable with basically just a drill press, hacksaw, and a drill, not much else. The motor just built bolted to a simple plate that bolts into the frame at several points. This, These are just simple things cut out of sheets. The um, one thing I did have for this was a welder, so this frame this frame in here was designed to support the other battery, so it's a bit uh, bit roomy for this one, but this was all done just out of simple uh, pieces of uh, metal with no uh, complex bends. On the other side, the uh, pedals and chain are still intact because according to the electric bicycle regulations here, the vehicle must be capable of being propelled under human power. And the chain normally goes straight through the center here where all the stuff goes, so I've just made a simple um, plate to guide it around them. It's not very efficient, this creates a lot of friction, but on this bike you're not pedaling, you just have to be capable of pedaling it. Inside this box is uh, just some basic switch gear for uh, turning power on to the motor controller, some switches that control the uh, main contactor and the pre-charge of the capacitors here through a through a resistor. And this contactor is just a uh, normal 100 or 240 volts, I think it's a four pole 25 amp contactor, but I've modified it with arc blowout magnets because this is uh, having to break DC. And these cause a magnetic field through the through the contacts, so an arc is blown outwards uh, to extinguish it. Other than that, there's just a little DC to DC converter, one of those cheap Chinese ones, to get 7.2 volts to run the headlight and the little turn signal thing on the back. And uh, yeah, not, not nothing else in here. Here's the inside of the battery. It's really, really tight. If I did this again, I would not build the box this tight. This was just built out of whatever random scraps I had, and it's sort of as a practice for learning to weld aluminum, so ignore the uh, horrible, ugly welds. Yeah, there's six, um, yeah, there's six 12 volt, or a 22.2 volt, uh, five amp hour Turnigy lithium polymer batteries. I think they're 20 to 30 C rated. The whole batteries for the pack cost about $300 total, I think. They're wired in um, groups of three in parallel, and then two of those groups in series. And uh, these are little things that connect the uh, balance ports all in parallel with some little with uh, PTCs in case there's some in, uh, really bad imbalance. And then in here, so you see the flashing LEDs on those. These are a couple of balance boards I'd built. These ensure that all the none of the cells get overcharged or over discharged and it can shunt 100 milliamps cr across each cell to uh, balance the pack during charging. On the front there's the main output connector which is an Anderson uh, 50 amp. A little bit small for this but we're not drawing uh, huge amounts of current for very long because uh, when you do draw those huge currents you get up to speed really quickly. And above that there's a connection for the um, uh, limit. This will provide a charge and discharge limit. Like it'll tr uh, tell the motor controller or battery charger to shut down to prevent overcharge or over discharge. And then there's a port for uh, CAN to talk to the uh, module on this to display information. Like this will track uh, amp hours uh, removed, how much capacity you have, voltage and current, etc.
you basically can't see it from here, but on the bottom, there's a current shunt that provides a current measurement for the BMS so it can track the amp hours in and out of, in and out of the pack. I chose these batteries over something like A123 pouch shells because these have a much lower internal resistance. There's, this pack has to supply hundreds of amps without dropping too much voltage. Here are the balance modules used. Uh, this is the master that has the CAN transceiver and everything on it, so then this talks to a bunch of these slave boards that are wired in a uh, daisy chain or in a, actually sort of a token ring network. These each balance six cells, and have, have voltage readings for all the cells, and 100 milliamps or 200 milliamps of uh, shunt current. I was originally going to develop this as a product, but then sort of uh, gave up on it, because the market's kind of saturated, it's really hard to get into. Although they are really cheap, it's based on the balance topology used in those cheap uh, lithium-ion battery chargers. They basically have this circuit uh, uh, in, in them. If there's interest, I can open source this. Uh, let me know in the comments. On the bike, this connector connects over um, to here, which goes to this little optocoupler setup. And that's just connected in parallel with the throttle and regen pots, and basically shorts them out uh, when the battery detects that uh, it's overcharged or under-discharged to stop the controller from uh, drawing, more current, drawing more current or uh, putting more current into the battery via regen braking. The throttle is a standard uh, Magura twist grip throttle. I think internally this just has a, little, a belt and it drives a pot as you turn it. And on the regen, there's this mechanism as you pull the brake pedal, it turns a pot and that activates the regen fun function on the motor controller. I also have a mode switch on the controller. If you just power the controller up normally, it powers up into a street legal mode that limits the bike to 32 kilometers an hour. If you power it up with this off-road mode held on, you get full power. There are a couple of things I don't like about this bike. Uh, the seat is not particularly comfortable, and it only has uh, rim brakes. There's no room really to put a disc brake on the back because the sprocket takes up that location. And on the front, I suppose it could be done, although I'd have to weld some mounts onto the uh, frame. It's not too bad, though, especially when the battery is somewhat discharged, because the regen braking does almost all of your braking effort, except for uh, quick emergency stops. Even even with the rim brakes, it's still perfectly adequate stopping power, more than you would uh, more than you would need. Battery is charged by this modified golf cart battery charger. This is one I basically just converted into an adjustable power supply, and hooked up this. Uh, it connects up via this golf cart charger panel made by my uh, old work. I'm going along with the golf cart theme on this. And this just outputs uh, about 20 amps constant current and it shuts off when the uh, third pin is uh, floated by the battery charge controller. That's just kidding. I need to do a much better setup for this. This is just sort of temporary, but you know how temporary becomes sort of semi-permanent once it works. And with a 20 amp charge rate, this thing will go from 0 to 80% charge in about 45 minutes. Now that we've covered everything, I'll take this out and give a quick demo of the acceleration and then a sh uh, video of a short ride around the area here. I did a quick measurement with my phone as an accelerometer and got about 0.5 g acceleration. The acceleration on this is absolutely insane. You have to be careful, otherwise you'll lift the front wheel off the ground like this. This thing just powers up hills with authority. This is the steepest hill I can find in the area. It's no problem at all to go up.
was uh, with Regen. After that run, which is about five kilometers of constant uh, hill climbing and descending, the motor is only slightly warm, maybe 40 degrees Celsius, 35, and the controller is about the same. And the battery, I basically can't feel uh, any warming at all. I hope you enjoyed this video on this electric bike. I hope I've inspired you to build a cool EV project, be it a bike or something else. Anyway, hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.